welcome to another episode of Buried Treasures. So if you think that my videos just drag on and on, you'll enjoy this one. It's all about the dragon, the Tic-Tac-Doe dragon. Okay, so the image, disk image is tic-tac-dragon.dsk and we're gonna boot it and let's see what it does. It's loading integer into language card in 1980. Oh boy, that was the slow load. And now press return to view image, then any key to play the theme music, then any key to exit. So you view the image and here is the dragon in low res, KFest 2022. And let's hear the music. Okay, and then the music repeats as long as you want and then press the any key to exit and it exits when that last note finishes. So now let's list it and see how you draw a dragon. This is how you draw a dragon. Puff the magic dragon lived inside the apple. Okay, we'll go through this code. Okay, let's list this code in some segments. Let's try 0 through 10. Okay, so we go to 100 and we skip everything before 100. Let's see, is there anything between 10 and 100? No. So the subroutines here are waiting for a key press, um, wiping the screen with a color, and the music routine to poke the programmer's aid ROM with a pitch and a time and call the music. There are just two bytes that it uses. And then I also added code to check if a key was pressed. So normally if there's no key, we're going to return. But if there is a key, I want to eat up that key and then pop the return stack and then end the program. So let's list uh, 9,000 on. Whoops, list 9,000 comma 32,767. Okay, so 9,000 just clears the screen and ends. It gets you back to text mode from graphics mode. And 32,767 is just some test code to show me the colors. So I could compare the colors as I was drawing it to pick the right colors. List 100 to 110. Okay, so line 100 is where I set up variables for the colors that I chose. So I have a background color, a dragon color, the black, um, the eye color, and a white for the teeth, and a Kansas Fest color for the letters and the numbers. So this clears the screen and eats up any key presses that may have come in, like when you reboot the disk. Um, then print the uh, headings and uh, the instructions. And I dimensioned a string variable for this input statement because who knows what the user is going to type in. So it's a garbage string that I'm initializing because I want you to press return because I found if I'm just uh, using that routine to check the negative 16 through 84, sometimes um, there'd be an extra character in the buffer and it would start running before I wanted it to. So that's just a nice little convenience. So now we finally go into low res graphics and we set full screen graphics with this poke statement. And our color is BG, the background color, and we do that go sub 4 to wipe the whole 48 by 40 screen with that color. And then we switch to the dragon color. So let's look at 110 to 120. Okay, so then um, I set up a variable for the starting line for drawing. So if I wanted to shift the whole image down or up, I just changed the YY. Like initially I had it at zero and then I realized I want that little one pixel border before I start drawing the dragon. And now here are the low res drawing commands. H line draws a horizontal line and then it has two coordinates, the leftmost and the rightmost coordinate for the line and then the at 
signifies the y coordinate. So the yy variable is 1 here. So we're going to draw from pixels 9 to 11. So that's three pixels at yy, which is one down. And then we're also going to draw 15, 24 at yy and uh, 2831 at yy. So the top row of the dragon has three segments, uh, like the horns and the forehead. So that's what does that. Now let's look at uh, 130 to 150. So comma 150. Okay. So, um, and then I do one more line, um, 9 to 31. Okay, so am I incrementing y? I should be. Oh, I, um, I missed uh, between 120 and 130. List 120 to 130. Yeah, there's a 125 that increments y, and then 130 does this uh, horizontal line for the next one, which is all green. Okay, and then just, it's all similar, 140 to 150. Uh, let's list uh, 130 to 150. Okay, so we're always incrementing y between each line of the dragon. So it's really s drawing from the top down. And uh, these coordinates were determined by looking at the grid of the low-res dragon picture. And let's list uh, 150 to 170. So the top part where we were just drawing green for the dragon, um, that's not as interesting. It's a nice and easy code. So now let's look uh, 170 to 200. Okay, so now things get a little interesting. So we're going to have uh, two black segments in the middle because that's the start of the black around the dragon's eyes. So. I first draw the green, and then I overdraw the black segments. So 8, then 9, 10, 11 is the first black pixel, 14 is the last black pixel, and then for the other eye, it's between 25 and 28. And then 29, 30, 31, and 32 are the green for the dragon because of the line 170. So that's the methodology. So what's nice about this code, you could pretty much guess what it's doing. The dragon, the black, and then EY is the eye color. So here I have the left eye, 12 to 17, and the right eye, 22 to 27. So I continued to that mode until I got to some tricky places where I had to draw letters. So let's see, let's 200 to 230. And okay, so you could see um, color is dragon, color is black, color is eye. So here I used a for next loop because I have two lines that are exactly the same. So this code between 210 and 219 gets executed twice, where first y equals 1 and then y equals 2. And the y variable is used, it's not used, but in other places I am using it within the loop. So here's the dragon color, the black, and the eye, because I had two lines stacked right on top of each other. Now here I have four lines that are exactly the same. We have a dragon, the black part, the eye, and then black in the eye. So these are the pupil of the eye. So um, if you look at the numbers and draw it on graph paper, you'll see how that works. Um, and uh, now let's look at 230 to 250. Okay, so here we have uh, black and, um, okay, so this is where the, the line where the dragon's hair <laughs> is not present, so it's just starting with black, and then we're drawing the eyes in the middle of that, and we're below the pupils. Okay, and then dragon, black, eye, so then we, yeah, we get back to the green part of the dragon, and then there's the black part and the eye part. So that continues until we have to draw the KF letters. So let's look at 250 to 270. Okay, so these look similar. List uh, 270 to 290. Okay, here... That's the same idea, but now we have five vertical 
characters that we're going to use the y variable within here. Here's like y minus three, y equals one. So let's look at that a little closer. So we draw the dragon, we draw the black segments. Now color is KFest. Whatever color you want for the KF letters. I chose yellow because this is a dragon breathing fiery letters for KFest and fiery numbers. So we plot five comma YY and six plus absolute value of y minus three comma y y. Well, let's look at that logic, y minus three. One minus three is negative two, then uh, two minus three is negative one, three minus three is zero, four minus three is positive one, and five minus three is positive two. And that's the diagonal letter part of the letter k. So we're plotting the five, and then we're plotting six plus either zero, one, or two. The absolute value makes that number positive, and that what what draws the k line by line, because y goes one through five. And then for the f, we're doing a horizontal line from 32 to 32 plus something. Well, if that plus something is zero, then it'll just plot the uh, vertical line for f for the f at 32. But now we're going from 32 to 2 times y equals 1 plus y equals 3. So what is that? This is a logical condition which evaluates to a 1 or a 0. If y equals 1, then that's a 1. If y equals 3, then that's a 1. And those are the only two lines on which I want to draw the horizontal parts of the letter f. So on those, I want to use two pixels to add to 32. So we go 32, 33, and 34, and that's what draws the letter F. It's just magic, right? No, it's logic. Okay, and then um, I have to clean up a little at the end, um, like for the number um, of the K, let's see, two. Um, yeah, I'm plotting certain points to clean up because uh, um, for that fifth line, I am yeah, adding a dragon uh, plot to just clean up a little. So y has already been incremented, so I'm using yy minus 1 to plot the previous line, overlay it. Okay, so this is um, the start of another Slackfest project to recreate tic-tac-toe whatever software they possibly used to uh, display the boards and the um, fonts, etc. But for the low-res art, I'm going to start with um, the um, dragon and the theme music. So I started working on the theme music last night, so let's load TTD theme and list it. Uh, so it's calling this integer basic programmer's aid music. So let's see, list uh, one comma hundred. So um, line 20 defines the locations where it expects to uh, find the uh, parameters for the music routine. So that's right before page three, the end of page two. And the music routine is in the programmer's aid ROM. And then it has five different timbres to choose from. I found the one I liked, uh, number two. So that's uh, it's poking in an eight. And then um, I did like a music subroutine in line 41 because the first theme repeats twice. And um, I'm just gonna continue that uh, model because um, then 140 has a different theme. So here's how it sounds so far. So I got to adjust some durations and uh, you could see what the code as it is right now. So last night I started coding this on an Apple 2 Plus with integer ROMs and only 32K of memory. So um, I uh, copied it to another floppy and put it on a 2 Plus which has a language card for now. 
And when I boot this disk, it's going to load the 2 plus system master disk. Okay, so it actually loads into your basic into the language card. So everybody could run this. And um, if this is the slow load of Integer Basic. The fast load of Integer Basic is on the disk that came with the Apple IIe. So now if I catalog this disk, um, what I've done so far is uh, I created a low-res move routine and um, I started some logic for the game. So let's look at that uh, low-res.move. Okay, well, negative. <laughs> Get used to this 2 plus keyboard. Okay, it's at 300. So, what is it doing here? It's doing a memory move from low res page 1 to page 2 by um, counting down from FF to 00. zero. And let's see if I BNE, is it not getting the 400 byte? So if it's it, when it equals zero, I think that should be a BP. Uh, I'm gonna have to change that logic. I have a bug. Okay, and then um, it's uh, at three one D. It is uh, bidding just to hit soft switches. So C zero five five is page two. C zero five two is full screen. So actually the low res will be forty by forty eight, and. Um, it seems like in the game show, they actually used the full screen low res and compensated for the characters, like drawing the X. It's a very thick X, and it, maybe the bottom has like a descender, a thicker box at the very bottom or something that they compensated. Uh, C056 is low res, and C050 turns on graphics. And then at 32A, it switches to page one of graphics. So the, what my logic thinking is that um, I would draw something on page one, move it to page two, and then um, draw something else on page one. And then um, we'd be looking at page two while I draw on page one. And then it, I'd call 32A to switch to page one to see that graphic. And then I could call the routine again to copy the new graphic to page two and then flip to page two so you won't notice it while I draw something new because I want uh, instant transitions without seeing the drawing or slowness. And um, imagining how the people in the game uh, had to be behind an Apple II, like typing in the clues and then like uh, pressing a number uh, or uh, pressing an X or an O or a D for the dragon. So um, let's look at the game. Okay, so there's a hard-coded control G. So those poke statements in line 32,000 were generated by 32765. So I put some useful uh, programming debugging routines at the, the end. So like if I run 32767, which is the maximum line number you could have in Integer Basic, I get my color bar so I could see uh, which colors I want to choose for my code. And uh, run uh, 32766, that reads the data from address 768 forward but um, I figured out I couldn't get a data statement in Integer Basic. Like if you try to do a thousand data, one, two, three, that's a syntax error. So I had to generate poke statements. So run 32765, and then I generated the line numbers and poke statements. And then on, see, on this two plus, I could do escape I, 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 and then a space bar, and then copy with the right arrow. But on the one with the integer ROM only, I had to use um, the escape uh, D, yeah, escape D, escape D, escape D, and then like escape uh, B if I have to go back, escape uh, C it goes down, escape A goes forward, all right, and uh, to actually get to the line and copy it. <laughs> uh, fun stuff. It's like programming back in 1979. 
Okay, so let's list zero to 100 here. And I skip over subroutines. So I put subroutines at the early phases of the program. So here's a few of them. So to check for a key press, I'm peaking the C000. And then I get the character code in CH in line three and then reset the keyboard strobe. So if I wanna check if the user pressed a key, I will go sub two and it'll stay in that loop until we get a key press. Okay. And then uh, line four is a wipe of the screen to a color. So 100 is um, going into full screen low res, setting the color to two, which is a dark blue, and go subbing four to wipe the screen. And let's see what else we have. Okay, so then uh, let's look at 100 to 200. Uh, you know, much. There's a control character in there. And that syntax error was a DAS syntax error. Interesting. Huh. Okay, so um, then right now, uh, go sub 32,000 will actually poke the machine language code in. And then 106 prints the control G, and then M1 and M2 are two machine language entry points into the code that come from, they're generated as that poke is executed. And then the go sub two color equals 15. Um, yes, yeah, so like I was trying to test if I uh, press the X key, will it draw an X? So this is just a simplified X and uh, plot it. it's just one line, I think, right now. Yeah, call M2 to display. So that's calling the machine language. All right, let's see how this works. Okay, and it breaks. And uh, what happened? Um, or maybe that was correct, but it did break somewhere. <laughs> Broke to the monitor. Oh, there's something missing. It's calling zero. Some the M1 and M2, okay, that goes up 32,000. Okay, so M1 is set to, oh, 30,000. Okay, so I actually made an error. I wanted 30,000 to be 32,000 because I'm ghost subbing 32,000. So let's fix that. Okay, so I want escape. So the two plus editing is a lot easier than escape, escape, escape. Okay, so now let's change this to 32,000 and um, I could use the repeat key. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't done much coding on the two plus uh, in real hardware. And let's delete 30,000 and run it now. Okay, a different error. Um, Okay, so the beep is 106. So go sub 32,000 is the machine code. Call M1. Now, so does that call? So let's just verify that it poked everything right. Okay. Looks good to me, but it's not perfect. Okay. But 32A should be. Yes, I can test these, like if I go into GR and like uh, color 15, call it shift to get an equal sign. All right, let's do H line 0, 39 at 20. Okay, now let's uh, call 768. Okay, so I, had, I didn't clear page two. Okay, you see that those bytes at the beginning, that is because of my bug in the machine code. Okay, so then what I should be um, doing next is like a V line, I'm blind typing here, V line 0, 39 at 20, and now call 768. Um, okay, so that's another way of doing it, just uh, staying on page two and copying it in with a fast memory move. But I think I do want to do the page flip. So let's just do another one. Uh, H line uh, 0, 30, 30 at 0. 
Okay, and then let's call 3, 2A. So what is 2A? That's 32 and 10, 42. Call 7, 6, 8 plus 42. Oops. Okay, so that was an actual memory move. And let's do this call negative 1, 51. And let's do our own manual page flipping. C055, C054, C055, C054. So low res page flipping, which I never actually did before. So having fun. All right, let's take a look at that machine language code and fix it. So let's vload lowres.move. Call negative 151. And a little trick if you want to see where it loaded, AA60.AA73 will show you from DOS where it started and how many bytes. So if you look at the ending two bytes, it's 0003. That is, reverse it, it to page uh, address 300. Uh, in hex, and then the first two bytes is the length, so it's 2f bytes long. So if you do 300L, you see it goes down to 2f, and um, it's uh, actually 2e is the last byte saved to disk, and um, it's always good to save like an extra byte or two, so you make sure you have all your code. All right, so... Um, what I want to do is change this to be uh, start at zero and go forward until it equals zero again. So I'm going to go into the mini assembler. Now on the two plus, you can't use an exclamation point. You have to remember the devil's code. Okay. Um, I have to be an integer basic for that to work. All right. F. Okay, now I get the exclamation prompt. Now you could issue monitor commands from the mini assembler, which is nice. And then um, you can't get out of the mini assembler until you do dollar F669 uh, or FF69. Okay, so then you do, that's how you get back in. All right, so what I want to do is change 300. <laughs> to LDA, LDX, number zero. Okay, now let's list that again. So what would happen now? It would decrement, you know, this is, if I could leave it like this, because starting at zero, it'll handle 400, but then it'll go to 4FF. Interesting, I, could, I was thinking I'd have to change 318 to an increment X. Uh, will it have a problem? So when we decrement from one to zero, it will get out of the loop. So yeah, let's leave that as the minimum patch to fix the code. And uh, we'd have to be save it with the same name. So remember the file name or do a catalog, which you can't from here. Uh, I mean, you can do this. You can do FF69G to get out and then catalog. But if you hit the reset, and you go back into the monitor, let's see, call negative 151, and can you do a catalog? Oh, you still can in this 2 plus. Okay, so DOS is loaded. Um, on the old monitor ROM, you'd have to do the 3 dog, 3D0G. Okay, so let's see, 300L, and then I could do my B save, and we're calling it, what are we calling it? Um, low res move. A string 300, L string, let's keep it at 2F. Okay, so it's saving to the disk 2 drive now. Okay, so um, there, in the DOS manual, there's a joke. Like, say you're working on something called beer inventory, and you've saved it that f five times while you're working on it, and then um, on the sixth time, you save it as bear inventory instead of BE. ER, you say bear in B E A R inventory, you'll have two files on your disk and then your version control is all messed up. Okay, bear inventory is version five, but bear inventory is version six. And if you don't know that, you're going to come next day, just going to load bear inventory and it'll be the version. Then you'll say, Where'd my code go? Oh, it's in bear inventory. So <laughs> when you're working in DOS 3.3, 
yeah, you got to keep track of stuff. The good old days. Okay, now let's see if our screen glitch is fixed in the game. Okay, so if I type X, yeah, so it's that uh, low res um, C056 is not being set right. Uh, the, the C052. All right, something more to debug, which I'll get to later.